Now, let's see. Where was I? Hmm. I, I wonder which way I ought to go. There's a bell in the way. Why, why, you're a cat. A Cheshire cat. All the mimosy. Oh, the water goes. Oh, wait. Don't go, please. Very well. Third course. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you, but, but I just wanted to ask you which way I ought to go. Well, that depends on where you want to get to. Oh, it really doesn't matter. As long as I can... Then it really doesn't matter which way you go. Peace be upon you. So that was an excerpt from uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, the Disney movie, where Alice was uh, trying to figure out where to go. And when she asked the Cheshire Cat where to go, since she didn't know where she wanted to go, uh, it really didn't matter what direction she goes. And this is a great kind of uh, analogy for life. You know, a lot of times we're, we're stuck and we don't exactly understand where is it that we want to go. And this is actually uh, asked of the human being in the Quran in chapter 53, verse 24. It says, what is it the human being desires? You know, what is it that we want in life? Uh, and where is it that we want to go? And if we can't answer these questions just very straightforward and uh, precisely, um, we could end up anywhere. And it's a risk that isn't really worth taking because we could end up astray. Uh, we can end up basically distancing ourselves from God. And if we end up in that outcome, it could be very detrimental both in this life and in the hereafter. And there's a quote uh, that uh, uh, I heard before. It says, uh, when you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And by not having a solid foundation of where it is that we want to go, you know, what is our end destination, um, we can end up just about anywhere. We can be swayed, we can be tricked, we can be um, uh, kind of persuaded to, to, to basically follow just about anything that sounds good. In chapter 26, verse 221 through 226 says, uh, Shall I inform you upon whom the devils descend? They descend upon every guilty fabricator. They pretend to listen, but most of them are liars. As for the poets, they are followed only by destroyers. Do you not see that their loyalty shifts according to the situation and that they say what they do not do? And this is a uh, common example, right? Someone has a uh, catchy phrase or a uh, cool slogan and, you know, everyone just kind of jumps on board. And they don't ask themselves, you know, about the, uh, the foundation, the principles behind this, this idea. And by not having a strong foundation, not having a concise kind of understanding of what is it that we stand for, where is it that we want to go, um, again, it can lead us astray. And, you know, we get distracted by whatever shiny object or whatever, you know, cool new uh, thing uh, comes along. And it might not be for our best interests. And, you know, when we don't have that foundation, again, we can be uh, uh, persuaded, we can be tempted uh, by things that are absolutely detrimental to us because it seems like that's what uh, is in, uh, in, in fashion or whatever uh, at the moment. And an example of this is in chapter 7, verse 138 through 140. It says, uh, and this is in regard to the children of Israel after they leave uh, Pharaoh. It says, after all the miracles, we delivered the children of Israel across the sea. When they passed by the people who were worshiping statues, they said, oh, Moses, make a God for us like the gods they have. He said, indeed, you are ignorant people. These people are committing a blasphemy for what they are doing is disastrous for them. Shall I seek for you other than God to be your God when he has blessed you more than anyone else in the world? And you see this, that after all these miracles the children of Israel saw, after basically being uh, saved from, the, uh, from Pharaoh and his troops, um, they still didn't understand the core fundamentals of their belief to worship God alone. You know, not to set up any idols. Uh, you know, one so blatant as a golden calf uh, next to God. And this has to do with, you know, basically understanding our values, our virtues, and our priorities. And, um, you know, if we don't understand what our priorities are, then our priorities are going to be linked with our virtues. So therefore, we don't know what our virtues are. And in chapter 10, verse 9, it says, God guides the believers. It says, as for those who believe and lead a righteous life, that our Lord guides them by virtue of their belief. Rivers will flow beneath them in the gardens of bliss. And if we don't understand our virtues... How are we ever going to be able to align our priorities? How do we know what to basically prioritize in our life? 
Um, in chapter 29, verse 64, it reads, Rearrange your priorities. It says, This worldly life is no more than vanity and play, while the abode of the hereafter is the real life, if they only knew. And in chapter 30, verse 6 and 7, it says, Preoccupation with the wrong life. It says, Such is God's promise, and God never breaks His promise, but most people do not know. They care only about things of this world that are visible to them, while being totally oblivious to the hereafter. So, we have to basically have a core understanding of what our virtues are. And once we understand our virtues, we can basically assess what our priorities are to, to achieve those virtues. So again, it comes back to the fundamental question, what is it that we want? What is it that we're, we're aiming for? What is it that we're going to spend our time praying for, searching for, uh, you know, basically growing to, to aspire to? And, you know, there's uh, Abraham Maslow put together a, uh, uh, his uh, little pyramid as far as the, the desires of a human being as they, they progress. And the, uh, the first desire is the uh, physiological, right? Breathing, food, water, um, uh, warmth, uh, shelter, these kind of stuff. And then it's safety, uh, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization, which is the highest uh, form of, um, of uh, human desires. And, you know, we have to ask ourselves, like, when we're searching for something, when we're praying for something, when we're spending our energy and resources to a attain something, what is it that we're, we're asking for? And a simple way to basically uh, assess this is when we pray for something, ask yourself, why do you want that? You know, what is it that you're hoping to achieve by having that? And um, a lot of times, you know, the, the natural things most people pray for are things of this world, material possessions, which is natural. And in all honesty, it's something that God advocates in um, chapter 40, verse 60, it says, uh, supplication, a form of worship. It says, your Lord says, implore me and I will respond to you. Surely those who are too arrogant to worship me will enter Gehenna forcibly. And what this tells me is anything we pray for, if we're asking God for it, it shows that we understand the system, that God is the one who answers our prayers. God is the one who uh, allows provisions for the people. And by imploring God, we're understanding that relationship. But we have a limited amount of time on this planet. We have a limited amount of time in the day. And we have to choose what do we pray for? You know, what is it that we're going to seek in this life? And if we understand that, it can make our prayers and our understanding a lot more efficient. And a simple way of basically coming to the realization of what is it that we want is when we pray for something, ask a simple question. Why? You know, if I say I want a promotion, I should ask myself, why do I want the promotion? You know, maybe I want the promotion for prestige or for more pay. And then I ask myself, why do I want more pay? You know, why do I want the prestige? Because ultimately, if I get more pay, if my expenses go up, then my purchasing power actually decreases. Or if I want prestige, you know, prestige comes with responsibility. Um, it comes with certain ownership that I have to basically uh, to obtain. Uh, is it going to boost my ego? Is that something that I want? You know, ultimately, uh, ideally, no. So you dig a little deeper and say, well, why do, we, why do you want the, the, the higher pay or why do you want the prestige? And, you know, it might be I want to feel successful. I want people to respect me, you know, or some other uh, motivation behind it. And you have to ask yourself, A, is that something that is going to benefit you, right? Is that something that's going to benefit your soul, the real you? Is this something that's going to basically uh, exalt your ego or boost your soul? And if it's to exalt our ego, we have to reinforce, you know, basically reassess why is it that we want that to start. But if it's to grow our soul, we realize that the reason we want these things is because we want to be happy or we want contentment or we want a feeling of purpose. And I've come to realize that, you know, most of the things that we pray for, most of the things I pray for, it stems behind one of these three aspects is that I want happiness, I want contentment, and I want a feeling of purpose. So wouldn't it make more sense to go directly to, to the source and ask God directly for happiness, for contentment, for a feeling of purpose? Because when we pray for something like that, or, you know, the, the best prayer actually that we can do is to pray for guidance. You think about this, the, uh, the Fatiha, the opening uh, chapter of the Quran. Um, what is it that we're asking God for in, those, in that prayer? And um, it's worth, it's such a simple question, but it's definitely worth just reading it and thinking of it. So the translation is, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the universe, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. So everything up until this point has been a declaration. This is the declaration of the believers. 
And this is the prayer of the believers, says, guide us in the right path, the path of those whom you've blessed, not of those who have deserved wrath, nor of the strayers. And you realize when you pray to basically for guidance, to be on the right path, to be with those who are blessed by God, everything else that uh, can constitute that becomes irrelevant. Because at the end of the day, the thing that we should care about is the guidance from God. And if we pray for that guidance and we truly implore God for that guidance and we ask ourselves in every prayer we make, is this going to allow us to basically increase in guidance, increase in steadfastness, increase in our devotion to God? And if we just pray for that, we'll accept any outcome because we realize that God is the one who answers the prayers. In um, chapter, uh, let me see if I can find that one. Um, 4, 134, it says, Anyone who seeks the materials of this world should know that God possesses both the materials of this world and the hereafter. God is here, is here. In 42.20, says, Whoever seeks the rewards of the hereafter, we multiply the rewards for him. And whoever seeks the materials of this world, we give him therefrom. Then he receives no share in the hereafter. You know, God is going to give us whatever it is that we pray for. And it's up to us how to basically formulate our prayers to be uh, to optimize for the, uh, the most amount of good. And God is going to dictate that for us. He's going to help us through that process. But we have to make a conscientious effort to basically think, you know, what is going to be the ultimate prayer? What is the one prayer that I can do that is never going to basically uh, uh, be detrimental to me, right? Because if I pray for a you know shiny new car, uh, that comes with certain uh, potential headaches that I didn't foresee. It might be a boost in my ego. It might be additional cost. It might be whatever. Um, but there's a multitude of ways that this could go for a benefit or for a detriment. But when we pray for guidance, you know, when we pray for uh, happiness, when we pray uh, to basically be the utmost submitters, these are things that can never go wary. And um, it reminds me of something I read recently in regards to uh, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. So Jeff Bezos recommends if you want to build a successful, sustainable business, don't ask yourself what could change in the next uh, 10 years that could affect your company. Instead, ask yourself what won't change. Then put all your energy and effort in those things. So, you know, Jeff Bezos, he says, for instance, is his customers ever going to complain that the price is too low? No. So he's going to focus his energy on how to get his prices lower. You know, are his uh, customers ever going to complain that, hey, they got the package too fast, right? They wanted more of a delay. No, this is something that people are always going to want, uh, in essence, is how to, to get their uh, their deliverables faster. You know, so these are the, the things that uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon focus on. And we have to ask ourselves the same thing in regards to our belief. You know, what are these universal truths that will always benefit us, that will never backfire, that will never basically be uh, at the, uh, the the expense of uh, corrosion, rust, loss, theft, whatever, right? It's righteousness. When we basically store up righteousness, we know that it's always going to be for our good. And um, it reminds me of a, uh, uh, a verse that I know we've read in the past uh, in the Bible. Let's see if I can pull it up. It's in Matthew 6. Um, this one. It says, do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, so we need to pray for what's going to benefit us, right? Um, ultimately, any prayer we do to God, imploring of God is good. But as we grow in submission, we need to basically refine our prayers to make them the, the most efficient, the most optimized. And uh, this shows a degree of belief. Um, and in um, 1828, it reads, You shall force yourself to be with those who worship their Lord day and night, seeking Him alone. Do not turn your eyes away from them, seeking the vanities of this world. Nor shall you obey one whose heart we rendered oblivious to our message, one who pursues his own desires and whose priorities are confused. Right. When we basically align our priorities, when we align our virtues, when we understand what it is that we're searching for and we spend our energy and focus to basically achieve that that core fundamental belief, you know, we will never be uh, uh, we'll never be at loss. We'll never be uh, discouraged. We'll never be upset. 
And um, it's something that ultimately is going to give us the happiness, the contentment, the feeling of purpose when we have the, uh, the guidance that God provides to us, when we attain righteousness. Um, it's something that is going to benefit us today and all through time. And on that note, God willing, we're going to end there. If you guys got any comments or questions, hit us up at Korantalk at gmail.com. Uh, and if you got a chance, you know, we'd love a, a rating on uh, uh, iTunes. Uh, hopefully uh, try to move up the, the ranks, inshallah. And um, if also uh, hit us up on uh, Twitter at Talk Quran. Until next time, peace and God bless.